Okay, what's up YouTube? You know what it is. It is Pacey AI one more time and about to give you another video. Remember to leave a like, share, and subscribe. So this is obviously the more controversial topic of the Microsoft conference. Obviously, we know about all the privacy concerns re related to this particular topic this particular feature that Microsoft just announced for their Copilot Plus PCs and obviously this is going to be something that they're going to be rolling out sometime in the future within say the next six months and obviously people are concerned like, let's be real this is this is probably the this is the most interesting feature this is the feature that everybody's talking about and it is the most concerning Right. I mean, when it comes on to privacy, obviously that's a serious issue. People want to make sure they protect their privacy, protect their data. And obviously we're seeing something that could possibly compromise that to some degree. Right. So I'm going to kind of do a review on this section of the Microsoft keynote that they did two days ago and give my thoughts on it, what they revealed. And I'm also going to check online for just some information that Microsoft did give to us related to this. So without further ado, let's start. Yeah, give us an overview of Recall, please. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Uh, my team developed Recall to help you find anything you have ever seen or done on your PC. We leverage the power of the MPU to ensure content stays on your device, which makes the experience fast and maintains your privacy. Okay. Let me show you a few ways that Recall helps me. Like all of you, I am constantly jumping between different tasks throughout my day, managing my time between a career I am passionate about, staying connected with my family and friends around the world, and the hobbies that I love. Recall helps me get through all these tasks more quickly. My family and I have been searching for the perfect dress for my grandmother, who lives in Colombia, to wear at my cousin's wedding. I've been browsing Pinterest and shopping websites for some options that I can share with her. After looking for options for a few weeks, I wanted to go back and see some of the favorite blue dresses I have found, but I didn't keep all my browser tabs open. With Recall, I can just search for blue dress, and it pulls together all the dresses I have seen. Now, Grandma decided that she wanted to get the awesome pantsuit that we shared in our Discord chat about three weeks ago. Now, scrolling through multiple weeks of chat messages to find that specific dress would have taken an eternity. Instead, with Recall, it was easy. I refined my search using descriptive language, blue pan suit with a sequin lace from Abuelita. And as you can see, Recall quickly found the Discord chat my family and I were using to discuss the options. And here it is, the dress that Abuelita liked. Recall analyzes the snapshot, and it gives me options for what I can do next. In this case, I want to click the link, which takes me back to the right web page where I can make the purchase. And now, Grandma has a gorgeous outfit for the wedding. This is a great example. So, as you can see, uh, you can recall anything on your PC. What's happening is that your PC is being recorded 24-7, right? by this AI, by Copilot, right? And I just wanna let you guys know, this is a feature that you could turn off. They're gonna touch on that a little bit. And, but essentially what this is, it's a, it's a feature that's recording your PC 24 seven, right? As long as you're on your PC, it's doing it in the background, right? It's recording and storing every single thing you've done to your PC. So every single app you've opened up, every single website you've been on, every single file you've browsed, folder, whatever, games you've played, whatever it is, right? And you can just ask questions. Like, so if, let's say you, for, let's say how many times this has happened to you, right? Where you're working on something and you're looking for a particular file or you're looking for a particular folder or a picture that was stored in your PC and you ask, have to be digging to, to find it, right? And how much time it actually takes you, right? So with this feature, all it will do is you just put in whatever you need. If you went on a website, you just need to give it a, a, a clear enough, vague enough description to where 
it can then go ahead and search. So if you, a lot of times you go on a website, right? You forgot the website that you went on, but it was about this particular thing that you needed to get an answer to, right? And you didn't, you can't find in your history. Uh, you've been digging to try to get it and it takes you hours to find that. Well, what this feature is gonna do is that it's gonna allow you to just find things more quickly and operate more efficiently, which is a great use case if this wasn't the issue and that is privacy obviously i'm going to let the video play out play out on and then i'm going to give my thoughts on the privacy portion of it carolina that i think is going to show how recall is so helpful for people but one thing i'm not sure people noticed is you used the word peacock but it wasn't anywhere in what you were searching for. How did Recall recognize that and what's going on behind the covers? Yeah, absolutely. So Recall can understand that Peacock is in the family of the blue hues, so it creates that semantic association that is used to help me find the dress. Okay, Recall is also essential for me at work. Like many of you, my team and I spend a ton of time collaborating on presentations and documents. For example, over the past few weeks, we have been collaborating on a presentation for our product pitch. The deck was created by my partners in the marketing team, and when I finally got around to add my content, I could not figure out where to look for the deck. I tried to remember, was a deck shared in the call? Maybe I had seen it in an email, or maybe I could go and find it in my recent files in PowerPoint. I don't really have time to spend clicking around. But with Recall, I no longer have to go on a searching expedition. I remembered in the outline, we had added a purple chart with writing, a purple um, a chart with purple writing. Uh, and to find the PowerPoint, all I had to do was simply use my voice to search for that clue that I remember. In, in a few seconds, Recall found the deck for me. And notice that it took me to the exact slide that I remember, saving me even more time. Now, to put the finishing touches, I wanted to add the final marketing line, but couldn't remember the exact words. I did remember that Nikki shared it in the planning meeting on Teams last Tuesday. With Timeline and Recall, I was able to scroll back in time and find the snapshot of that meeting. I was then able to quickly copy that um, quote and add it to the deck. And then once again, Recall made it easier for me to find the information just using the clues that I remember. Now, these are just two of the examples of how I use Recall on a daily basis. Thank you so much, Carolina. Yeah, thank you. So again, a lot of features here. You also have a timeline that you can drag back and forth to go back to a particular point in time to find some, to find an app that you use or software that you use, whatever to find information about a particular document. So, you know, uh, let me just let this play out first and then I'll talk about the privacy uh, portion of it. Now we know to achieve a real breakthrough with recall and AI, you have to be able to trust it with your data and your information. So we've built recall with responsible AI principles and aligned it with our standards. And we're taking a very conservative approach we're gonna keep your recall index private and local and secure on just the device. We won't use any of that information to train any AI models, and we put you completely in control with the ability to edit and delete anything that has been captured. Now, recall is just the first of several of these great breakthrough experiences. So, so as you're saying right here, they will essentially have this recall feature you can turn it on and turn it off right it doesn't have to be on and then the thing is is that it's going to be ro running locally it's going to be running locally on your machine so none of the data will be used to train any of their llms it will not be shared with a cloud things of that nature the information will not go on the internet essentially so i mean take it for what you will obviously a lot of people are are still up in arms about this because hey listen nobody trusts these big tech companies nobody trusts microsoft microsoft has a bad reputation of uh using people's data and for ads and things of that nature so obviously a lot of people are not going to trust this so i mean you're going to have a lot of people that's going to turn this off 
Um, me in particular, I really have to think about it. Um, for me, I think this feature, I do see a good use case to this feature. I'm not even going to lie. I do see a great use case to this feature in that it will save me so much time, especially when I'm working on projects. It will save me so much time because to have to go back and search up something that I looked up in the past and things of that nature, it's that that's tough, right? I mean, and I think one of the great things about it, like let's say, I think one of the great things about this feature, let's say you accidentally delete something, right? Whether it be you're working on a website, whatever it is, and you delete, you delete something, right? Delete a folder on your website or whatever it is, right? You can use a recall to kind of get the information of that particular file or folder or get the information of that web page and then recreate that web page based on the information from recall. So that's pretty cool, man. I don't know about you, bro, but that is pretty dope. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I have to evaluate it once I, once I start using it. I don't really use my computer for anything nefarious. So I am not necessarily worried about it, but then again, everybody is entitled to what they want to do and to each of his own. Uh, I want to kind of show you guys, you know, just what Microsoft has said on their website about this feature in terms of the privacy, right? So obviously they're saying that uh, they're saying that recall won't save any content from your private browsing activity when you're using Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Opera, Google Chrome, or any other Chromium-based browser. So essentially, if you don't want, want recall to store your activity on the internet, just use a private browser. Use incognito. You could use a private browser, whatever, right? The, the private, you can use a private browser right for microsoft edge to essentially uh stop recall from recording your data right and then it says recall treats material protected with digital rights management drm similarly like any other like other windows apps such as the snipping tool recall does not store drm content so obviously drm games whatever it is Recall is not going to store that information, right? So any kind of content that's protected by DRM, you know what that is, like games and things of that nature. Recall is not going to store that software applications, things of that nature. Also, uh, to help access text and images currently on your screen, when you launch Recall, or oh, when you select Now button, your current screen will be displayed. And recall without saving a new snapshot right and then it says no recall does not perform content moderation so this is important right here it will not hide information such as passwords or financial account numbers that data may be in snapshots that are stored on your device especially when sites do not follow standard internet protocols like cloaking password entry right so it doesn't perform content moderation Right. If you put a password into a site, it can it can essentially recall that information. It can screenshot that password that you put in. So if there's no cloaking of your password by that website, if your password is shown in plain text, then essentially that can be accessed through the snapshots of recall. Right. So that's something that you got to keep in mind as well. Right. And I didn't touch on uh, the first note. So they say saying filtering out specific websites will only work in supported browsers such as Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Google Chrome. Google Chrome. You will always have the option to filter out any browser activity by adding an app for a browser. To add support for web filtering, Developers need to implement recall activity API. So it only it's mainly gonna the filtering is gonna only be supported for just the main browsers that people use, which are Google Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much that. So that's what they're giving support for. So that's pretty much that. Let me see if there's any other information that was stated here about recall. Experiences that we're gonna show you, possible only because of the Copilot plus PC architecture. We're gonna show you a couple more in just a minute. And I think we'll see many more as developers come and start to get to work on Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, nothing more to really talk about with this. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, this is a controversial feature and a lot of people are not excited about this one, right? Or a lot of people are on the fence. Let me not say they're not excited. I think it's, I think, I think people are torn, you know, obviously because there is a benefit to it. It does provide a lot of convenience, but as with any technology, whenever there's convenience, there's also the risk of security or privacy being compromised, right? Usually you're going to, you're going to substitute convenience for either privacy or security. One out of two, like usually that's how it works. You kind of substitute, you kind of substitute the two, right? So that's something to keep in mind that this is adding a whole lot of convenience to your life, right? So privacy may be the thing that you have to give up to a degree. However, with the information that Microsoft has given us, they're saying that this is only going to be stored locally. All these snapshots are going to be local to your machine. It's not going to be in the cloud. It's not going to be used to train none of their models, right? Which is very important. So let me know what you guys think. Have a great day. Pacey AI signing out. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out more videos, but have a great day. Pacey AI. Peace.